might go to the pool today. I don't know. It's pretty hot out. It's like 97 okay. degrees. It's not fun. Okay. It's bad. It's torp. It's it's horrible. It's terrible. I don't like summer. I, I like summer this year more than I usually do, which is cool. But sometimes it's not cool, man. It's pretty hot, actually. Is this on? Hello there! You may call me Miss Introvert, and today we are going to be talking about imposter syndrome in our first entry of the imposter series. Feel free to comment down below times that you felt like an imposter because I will be telling you guys a story about a time that I felt like an imposter. One time of many. So yeah, it's great writing practice and it helps us feel less alone. Maybe try writing in the perspective of someone else who's had imposter syndrome and try to see what it's like in their shoes. Again, we're not alone. People have imposter syndrome in all kinds of fields, not just writing. I know, it's crazy. It's also great writing practice when you've got a diverse cast of characters, so give it a try. While you do that, I am going to try and not think about whether or not I'm qualified to tell you these stories, because now I feel like an imposter. So yay! If you're new here, I am an avid introvert who wants to write for a living, and I love sharing stories and working with other writers on YouTube and other platforms. So just click that subscribe button and like this video if you're into that kind of stuff too. If you're a beginning writer, I've got tons of writing instruction videos on this channel and way more on the way. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that. Now let's start the video before you click away. For all that I know, you think I'm an imposter, so. All right, so before I get started in my story for the day, I just want to let all of you know that you are all talented, amazing, lovely writers who are doing great stuff, and you might not even know it. Even if you're not a popular writer, or not many people know about you, maybe you've published something, and that's awesome. Your work is out there. If you haven't published something yet, maybe you're still writing as often as you can which is pretty cool, especially if you have other priorities, like full-time jobs, kids, or pets that you have to take care of. Maybe you consider your pets your kids, I don't know. So keep it up, look at you go. And if you're in the middle of writer's block and there's nothing coming out onto your Word document or onto a piece of paper, don't despair. You've got little ideas that are exploding into all sorts of new things, like poems and novels and how-to guides and book blurbs and booklets and all sorts of things, and all you have to do is jot those ideas down to get started. Little baby steps, and soon you'll be on your way. So you're doing great. Whether you know it or not, you are doing amazing, and don't listen to your imposter syndrome. For all that I know, I can be talking to the next genius writer who takes over bookshelves and social media ads and instructional guides or all of those and more. So give yourself a pat on the back because you're a writer. You might have gotten this kind of praise before and I'm sure you've probably also gotten plenty of criticisms before, which is sometimes where imposter syndrome can come from. Criticism can be tough. It can make the work that you've worked so hard on turn into something that's seemingly slandered and ends up humiliating you. But we all know the point of criticism is to take it, use it, fix things up, and maybe even ask for more help in order to become a better writer. But there are times when you have to take that first step and just tell yourself to do that. Meanwhile, before you do that, you might be thinking to yourself, you don't have what it takes anymore, everyone is better than you, and you don't want to write anymore. But don't quit yet. It is time to have a conversation with yourself. Maybe I should make a writing mind video about this, I don't know. I've had plenty of conversations with myself about this. Anyway, story time. So many of you know that I started my first year away at college in the fall. I started my junior year, I've already been going to community college for a couple of years, got an associate's degree in arts, and now I'm working on my English and writing double major to get a bachelor's and whatnot next year is senior year so yay whatever that means yeah i transferred to a university and i had a bunch of classes and a writing program and i've been introduced to so many different intentional professors one of me and the rest of my fellow students to really grow as writers it was through them that i realized just how much i had to learn and stepping back now it was a lot. The place that I really struggled with were the essays, like starting out again in college, because it had been a whole summer since I had written essays, plus some lazy quarantine essay writing. You know what I'm talking about. And I hadn't really lit written like a full length essay, a full length working essay with like all of the really good organization, transitions, sometimes even correct word usage. I would read over my essays after writing them and say, yeah, they're right. This is, this, this isn't very good. <laughs> 
But yeah, all of a sudden I am back in in-person classes with full-length essays to write and conference papers and research papers and intense literary theory. Wow, it was a lot. But I got plenty of comments on what I could do to improve. And that was really nice. Without those comments, I wouldn't have known what to do. And thankfully, I feel so much more prepared for next semester, thanks to these amazing professors. But when I was in the middle of it all, in the thick of it, into the thick of it? We're out of the thick of it now, hopefully. But yeah, while we were in the middle of it all, it was not easy. And it wasn't just the profs, it was the peers. All around me, I imagined everyone in my class to be judging me because I thought, yeah, they're all better than me academically. They're all scholars. They're all these amazing students who are doing so much better than me. And I felt like a little kid in the midst of a bunch of well-rounded adults. <laughs> but yeah, I just pictured them getting better grades than me, knowing exactly how to write their papers. I like imagined them at their desks, just like looking into the computer, just like focused and they're like writing all these things down, making notes, making everything look good. All of that while I felt like I was getting nowhere. It felt like they were all qualified to come to this university and I wasn't. But nobody was saying that. I was the only one who was saying that. I mean, there might have been some people who were thinking it, I don't know. It wasn't just that I was picturing them doing all these great things. I mean, there were people who like showed, often humbly, that they knew what they were talking about in class. To those people, I say to them, I aspire to be like you. But I was constantly comparing myself to these scholarly students, older and younger than me, all different backgrounds of life, and I forgot to take into account that I have my own background of life, and I have my own things to pursue. I have my own timeline, my own pace. Pressure was getting to me, and I didn't... I didn't want to go at my own pace. I wanted to be faster. I wanted to be better right now. And whenever I didn't get faster or better right now, I convinced myself that I wasn't good enough. Watch my previous videos on my excitement for college and getting to share my writing with peers. You know that before university, I was a very avid introvert, still am, and I spent most of my time writing by myself. And writing is often a one person job, but showing it to others and getting that feedback is again, what makes it polished? Because it's being read in multiple perspectives, which is what will happen when you send your manuscript off to editors, publishers, and eventually audiences. But finding the right people and having the courage, first off, to show them my work was an ordeal. I am not an outgoing person. This was very new to me. Like I'd shown my writing to other people before, but I just felt so much vulnerable this time. So what was the resolution? Honestly, I'm still working on the resolution. I still get imposter syndrome from time to time, but I believe there are two parts for my current resolution, working resolution more like, that I just have to keep telling myself. Number one, keep working with the criticism. You've got to keep at it. Even if it's painful, even if reading every comment your teacher leaves is excruciating, fix it up. They know what they're talking about. If you're confused, go to office hours, see what they have to say. It's their job to clear things up for you and make sure that you completely understand everything you're being taught in the classroom. And I am so thankful for the profs that I have. Really make an effort to make sure that I'm on the right track. Not only will you grow in your own writing, but you'll also grow in your confidence. And the next time that you get someone else's feedback or criticism, you'll know what to do with it. You'll know how to take it the right way and you'll fix it up. Number two is that you're not alone. I already knew this, but knowing that you're not alone isn't really something you can fully tell yourself until you've actually related to someone. We had a discussion in writing theory class on like assignments that we done previously for other classes, writing assignments, and we discussed like the ones that we did well on and why we thought we did well on them, and the ones that we didn't do so well on and why we think we didn't do so well on them. And just for like reflection purposes. And once I heard that there were other people who had trouble with their research papers and dreaded the conference papers, the relief that I felt. And one of them was one of those really sophisticated scholarly people who always seemed to know what they were talking about. They still do, but Wow, it was such a relief to hear. It's so great to know that you're not alone, especially in people that you might consider to be better than you. And they might be, there's, there's always gonna be people who are better than you, but they all have their own struggles and sometimes we can relate in those struggles. And that's, that's really nice. Now I'm not saying you should always go searching out validation. You've gotta still take that criticism. You've gotta still keep working on your writing skills and whatnot, but it's nice to know that you're not alone and it helps with the camaraderie of 
making writing friends and working together on projects. We have to support each other because writing is not easy. It sucks and I hate it and I want to quit, but there are times when we all want to quit and we all still love writing. That's why we do it. So I don't know. That's, I hope we're writers that love it more than we hate it, but yeah. That was a really broad story, but it was nice to get it off my chest. Um, and thank you for listening if you made it this far. And comment down below that you're not alone to validate me. I'm just kidding. Please, I need validation. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like it, I'll keep making more. Um, if you don't, I don't know what to tell you. This is all I have, so there are gonna be other series, but this is one of the only ones I have, but yeah. Okay, bye!